Welcome to Politics Unplugged. I'm Ann Trujillo. We are just over a week away from finding out which of these two people, Michael Hancock or Jamie Gillis, will be Denver's mayor for the next four years. Now, these two are on the ballot in Denver's runoff election after getting the most votes of the six candidates that were on the ballot earlier this month. In fact, current mayor Michael Hancock only got 39 percent of the vote in that election. Gillis, 25 percent. And this time around, Gillis and two former competitors, Penfield Tate and Lisa Calderon, are hoping that's a sign that Denver voters are unhappy with Hancock and will elect Gillis to the city's top job. Well, I had a chance to sit down with Jamie Gillis and her newly formed unity committee earlier this week to find out what it took to get them to work together. When we sat down together to, to talk about whether or not we could come together and work together for the through this campaign and through a transition, hopefully to a new administration, we really wanted to focus on that unity piece and on not just our unity, but how a new administration could build unity throughout the city in all the neighborhoods and communities. And so um, the idea sort of evolved first out of how do we launch this partnership, this coalition that we've built, and how do we together go out into the neighborhoods and hear their voices um, as a team and really try to process what that means and what that looks like in terms of things we could do going forward. We have an opportunity to be bridge builders, to bring the city together. You know, we represent basically different aspects, different spectrums of the race, and yet we came together in a common purpose of bringing the city together, of moving forward, of having a new vision of leadership. We've all seen the video, the NAACP video. Mm -hmm. um, what happened with that? Simply a momentary freeze. Um, I think, unfortunately, it, it turned into a bigger conversation about whether I was sensitive to all the different racial and cultural um, issues in Denver and I think on one hand um, while it was an, an unfortunate moment for for me um, I think it has given us the opportunity to actually talk about the real issues in Denver and what we can do about them the reality is we're seeing we're the number one uh, city in the country for Latino Hispanic displacement um, we are seeing um, gentrification run rampant throughout our city and to me that's the that's the conversation we need to have and we talked about this beyond just what the letters in the word means it's the principle and what's the what was the driving force the driving movement behind the NAACP and a host of other organizations and it was about racial and economic equality and unity and opportunity and so the question we've talked about is, is it important to know what the letters stand for, or is it important to have a city that reflects the values of what the NAACP fought for? And I think most of us believe it's the latter, and we feel that with the gentrification that's occurred in the community, with the fact that minority-owned businesses have not shared equally in the financial prosperity of the community, that it doesn't matter if you understand what it stands for, the values have not been lived out. And that's why so many people in communities of color are talking about we need a change. Yeah. Although I think it is important to some people. I mean, you yeah, have to no, admit it. Without it, question, it, without it, question. It would be important for you without to question. know what, those, that's, that's what those letters that's stand fair. for. Yeah. Yeah, where, do you, where do you stand on the camping ban? Would you repeal it? First of all, I, I came out you know, from the beginning saying as opposed to 300, I thought it was bad policy. Um, we are not doing anything to actually solve homelessness. The camping ban, for example, has primarily been used as a tool to do the sweeps. And the sweeps have cost us money and they haven't actually moved people to housing and services. I think the camping ban's, ban is bad policy. We just settled a class action lawsuit on it. That said, I don't have the power to repeal the camping ban. That's a city council move. and I. I would love to move forward with city council and a new administration and say, here's the comprehensive plan and resources for how we're going to tackle homelessness. We need the right tools to make sure that we do that. So, uh, so many Denverites don't know you, Jamie Gillis. Um, according to Colorado politics, since moving to Colorado, you only voted in 10 of the last 22 municipal elections. So why should Denver put their trust in you if 
you haven't shown up to vote half the time. I've worked in a lot of different communities in Denver, so there, there are a lot of people in this community who have direct experience working with me who see how passionate I am about the work that I do. And there is no qualification for um, how many times you have to vote in order to run for public office. At the end of the day, this is, a, this is the biggest job interview of my life, and people are hiring a qualified administrator. Um, I, think, I think that's the focus right now. Do I have a resume? Do I have a work experience? Do I have the background to run a city, to build coalitions, to build teams? And I've got 17 years of experience working all over the world on that. So do you, do you regret that you haven't voted? I mean, should, I mean how, do you, how do you feel about that? Absolutely, absolutely. Um, but, you know, I can sit here all day and try to explain away, but it's, it's done. What's done is done. And it's, it's a great opportunity for us to also talk about the importance of always being involved in, in municipal elections. Um, I'll leave it at that. So I know you have all brought up gentrification. Uh, I think there's some concern that that's, that's part of what you have, have brought to Denver. You have, you have worked to, um, to change what was North Denver into now Rhino. Mm -hmm. Well, I've addressed that head-on in the campaign as well. Um, I didn't come into work in, in the River North District um, until 2014, 2015 when that development cycle was largely underway. And my role in that was not to develop or advance. I've never been a developer. Um, my role was to work with the community to say, you know, what is the opportunity we have to ensure that we, do, we attempt to do some things differently here? And we did. We did some great things. We you know, passed the city's first ever um, additional affordability overlay. We uh, supported the, the first tiny home village. We've invested in green infrastructure to address the pollution of our river. Um, invested in, in, in a number of things that wouldn't have happened otherwise. But those were the roles that I was playing at that time. And largely got, you know, the focus got, got turned to, am I the leader of the gentrification movement? And as I've said many times, there. There is not one individual that can be held responsible for the greater movement of gentrification that's happening here. Do you believe that Mayor Hancock is discounting your ability to lead because you're a woman? Um, I believe that Mayor Hancock is looking for a whole lot of reasons why I'm not qualified to lead. When you say, I don't think you have the experience, and you look at a resume of 17 years of working all over the world, advising to governments on urban issues, working 13 years in Denver. To say that I don't have experience at the age of 42 with that resume is something I don't think would be said to a man. I made that point last night, and I think it's important that we do stand up for gender equity in, in all of these jobs. It's not about, as I said, whether or not I have enough experience under my belt. It's what we're bringing to the table in terms of our actual work that we've done leadership. Do we, do we have the ideas? Have we demonstrated leadership in our own ways, in our own communities, to do what we need to do for the, the people of the city? Now, we have invited Mayor Michael Hancock back to Politics Unplugged to hear what he hopes to accomplish with four more years in office and what he thinks of Gillis and her unity committee. We will hear from him next week. And stay with us. We will be right back. <laughs>